Hello guys, this is Amel and welcome back. Well, uh, I'm so excited today because I'm going to show you how to do, um, well, saving. I'm going to show you how to save T -reg I mean the S registers to the stack. And if you don't know what the stack is, don't worry. I will explain it to you and I'll try to make it as easy as possible. So, let's make a new file. Go to File and New and let's save it as usual to my desktop and the name is going to be registers.asm save and here we are so as usual that data that text for the instructions so the data what do I want to have in access in random access memory I want to have um, a new line a new line because I want to I want to be able to print out a line between the numbers and it's going to be that ASCII Z. The data type is going to be text. ASCII is text. And then between quotation marks, it's going to be backslash N. And this is going to allow me to print out a new line. So now, as usual, I'm going to make my main function or my main procedure. And I need my. Um, this line is going to signal end of program so I want to make this code right here loading media dollar sign v0 comma 10 Cisco so this is going to tell the system that this is the end of the program so what I want to talk to you about today is about the convention of T registers and S registers so uh, let's say that we have a number um, and we want to save it to a T register and then we call a function and the function is going to use the T register and it's going to modify the value in the T register then because I'm using a T register um, the function can do whatever the function wants to the T register so T registers they are um, collie saved because if you call a function the function is the collie um, so uh, whatever the function does to the register, it's going to remain. It's going to remain. But if you're using an S register, it's a different story. Uh, because uh, the convention says that S registers right here, if you're using them, inside a function, you always have to um, save the old value from the color to the stack. So whenever you return, whenever you come back to the color, the value is is the same it was before so the function uh, the colleague is not allowed to modify the value in the s registers so now I'm gonna give you an example so let's say um, I say at immediate dollar sign is zero dollar sign zero comma ten so now ten is stored in the register as zero so I want to print it out so I'm going to say load immediate dollar sign v0 comma 1 to print an integer then move this is a pseudo instruction so I want to move um, the value in s0 to a0 because it's an argument a0 for argument um, and now I can just print it out Cisco so print value all right so if I execute the code right now, you're going to see the value 10 down here. Let me show you. Run, assemble, and then I'm going to execute. Voila, number 10. So right now, S0 right here has value 10. But let's say I'm making a function. So this function right here, the name is going to be uh, increase my register. So it's going to increase the value of my register. So I'm going to say um, I want to increase it. But remember the convention. If, if I'm using an S register inside a function, then I'm supposed to I'm supposed to save it. I'm supposed to have the old value. But how do I do that? Well, we have to use a special place in memory called a stack. And in order to use it, we have to use this register right here, SP. SP is the stack pointer. So we have to allocate enough space in the stack to store the, the old value 
the old value of a zero. So we're gonna do at immediate dollar sign sp dollar sign sp comma negative negative four. And why negative four? Because um because you know uh, four like it's an integer, right? Um, so we have to store in four bytes. So we have to allocate four bytes in the stack, and it's negative because the stack goes down. So when you are uh, subtracting from the stack, you are actually allocating um, space in the stack. If you are adding, then you are taking space from the stack. Uh, so now I can store the value in memory in the stack. So I'm going to say store word the value in dollar sign is zero. And I want to store it at this location. I'm going to store it as zero, that's the offset, and dollar sign as p. So this line right here, it says, save the value in a zero to the first to the first location in the stack pointer. So I allocated space for only for one element, and now in that space that I allocated in the first the first slot, the first element, the first position, because this is just the position. Uh, it has to be always a multiple of four. So it has to be or zero or four, but in this case, I only have one one uh, space allocated. So store the value in a zero, the old value, to this place in the stack. And now I can do whatever I want. I can do whatever I want to, to, to S0. So I'm going to say at immediate, the sign S0, the sign comma, the sign is zero, comma, let's say, uh, 30. So now, this is going to be 30 plus 10, which is 40. So in order to show you that, I'm going to print it out again. So I'm going to say, uh, print new value in function. So what I do here is that I say the same thing. Load immediate dollar sign v0, comma one, move dollar sign uh, a0, dollar sign a0, and Cisco. And then uh, this right here, this code is gonna show me the value in the screen. And I always want to return um, to the color. So I have to say jump register dollar sign RA because in this way when I finish the function I can go back to main. I can I can go back to the main function. So right here, but before that because you want to have the old value, you have to um, load the value from memory because then the old value is stored in memory. So you want to load it. So the old value is going to be in the in the register that it was before. So you just say load word and load word is just an instruction to load from memory, from random from random access memory. So dollar sign s zero, comma zero, dollar sign sp, and then you have to restore the stack. So an immediate dollar sign sp, dollar sign sp, comma four. So we're good to go. And now the old value is gonna be available in main when I'm done, when I'm done, and then I can return. But now I wanna show you, um, this is the value, right? This is the new value, but let's say, um, I just wanna call the function, jump and link, always remember you use jump and link to call the function, and before, I print the value. So I'm going to say increase my register. And now here, this is going to increase the value by 30. So it's going to be 40. So it's going to show 40 in the bottom, but then it's going to print it, print the value again. But the value in S0 is going to be the same as, as it was before. So it's, first, it's going to print 10 here. So first it's going to print 40 and then it's going to print 10. And you're going to see right now. Save it. Run. Assemble. Execute. And voila. It says 40 and 10. It's all together. So I have to fix it. I forgot to actually. Um, I have to. Let me print a line. 
print a line or a new line because it's all together and I don't want that. So I'm gonna say load immediate dollar sign v0 comma four load address uh, dollar sign a0 comma new line and then Cisco. So now I will be able to see the result um, in a new line. So run assemble. Um, so it says error, a uh, new line. Yes, um, I didn't spell it right. So it has to be new line. So now you know it has to be the same name. It's case sensitive. Make sure that it's the same, the same name. So save, run, assemble. Well, we're good to go. So execute. Voila, 40 and 10. So now I'm just going to walk you through the program again so you can see what, what happened here. So whenever you're using an S register inside a procedure or inside a function, by convention, you have to save it to the stack. Um, and why do we save it to the stack? Because we want the old value to be available when we come back. We, we don't want the function to be able to modify an S register. So that's why we have to save it to the stack. I, we say, OK, function, you can use the S register, but you're not allowed to use the to modify the value in the S register. So that's why we have to first allocate enough space in the stack. And the space is always um, by four. So let's say one element is uh, you have to allocate negative four, two elements, negative eight, three elements, negative 12. So you just multiply. You multiply how many elements by by a negative four by negative four, and then we store the value in the stack. And after that, we can do whatever we want with with the S register. In this case, I just added 30 to it. And to show you, I printed the value out to the screen, and you can see that the, that the value is now 40. And after I did what I wanted to do with it. I just have to restore the value, the old value that it had before. So I just load it from random access memory back to S0 and then restore the value in the stack by adding 4 because here I subtracted to allocate space on the stack. But here I have to add 4 to, to restore the old space in the stack. So after that, I just uh, return to the to the color. So jump register, dollar sign RA. And well, here, uh, you can see 40 is going to be printed um, because S0 was modified inside the function. But when after I returned, the value was restored. So when I print the value again, um, when I this is just printing a new, a new line. And when I print the value again, you can see that the old value, which is 10, is going to be printed because I restored the value before I came back from the function. So this is the main idea behind the conventions in MIPS when it comes to T registers and S registers. If you're using a T register inside inside a procedure or function, you don't have to save it to the stack because the function can modify the value in the register. So it has permission to modify the value. But if you're using an S register by convention, the programmer doesn't have permission to, or the function doesn't have permission to modify uh, to modify the value of the S register. So I hope you understand this. And well, thank you for watching. Um, it's very exciting. I hope uh, that you really enjoy this, and see you next time.